So this is the trial run. We'll see how it records. This is our introductory material to human anatomy and physiology. I'll give you a few moments here to pull out your material. We have about 10 minutes left in class. We're probably not going to finish this presentation, but let's see how far we get. So let's talk big picture, anatomy, physiology. This is the name of our course. What does the name of the class actually mean? When we look at the anatomy component, anatomy means the study of structure. And the way I've divided this class up, we're going to focus primarily on anatomy during lab. When we look at physiology, physiology is the study of function. And we're going to focus mostly on physiology in lecture. There'll be a little bit of overlap with both. And my favorite example is a hammer and screw. When we look at structure and function, the structure of something determines its function. I remember going camping this last summer, and I forgot to bring a hammer to put my tent stakes in the ground. You know, space cadet. So instead, I had this little screwdriver from the trunk of my car, and I'm tap, 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 tapping the tent stakes into the ground. The structure of my screwdriver meant it functioned really poorly to put a tent stake in the ground. On the other end of the spectrum, if we look at the hammer, I, if you need something to drive a nail into wood, Hammers work really well for that. The structure of a hammer means that it can function really well to drive nails into wood. And the same is true of our bodies. When you look at the membranes, when you look at the cell structure, when you look at the bony processes, the shape of the body part you're learning about will give, be a really big clue for you to tell you what the body part actually does for your body. They're interrelated to each other. Um, let's talk about my lecturing style before I get too far ahead. Um, traditionally, what I do for my lecturing portions is you may notice that there are some bolded and bolded words that are bright red. Typically, what I do in class is I give you, the students, a PowerPoint presentation that's missing those bolded and redded out or bright red words. And then when I present in class, you can see those bolded and bright red words. That way, there's some incentive for you to stay engaged and awake and not snooze or doze off in class. But at the same time, I don't want you to be overwhelmed with writing lots and lots of material down for each individual PowerPoint slide. So there'll be just a tiny bit of writing for each slide. When we look at the human body and we're trying to study the human body, there are different ways we can study the human body. You can just look at it. Just looking at somebody, in a technical sense, is called inspection. And when you feel somebody for a medical purpose, that's a key, key caveat there, it's called palpation. You know, there's different ways to feel people. You know, you can, you can fondle, you can touch, you can punch. To palpate means to feel a human being with a clinical or medical purpose in mind. When we use a stethoscope to listen to the body. So we're not evacuating, right? <laughs> OK, OK, OK. Like, no, seriously, like, I was so frustrated on Friday. <sighs> All right, so let's say, where were we? Listening to stuff. Um, when you listen to the human body, that's called osculation. Traditionally, you use that with a stethoscope, although if you wanted to go old school, you could just take your ear and put it up against the person's abdominal, pelvic, or thoracic cavity. Um, I have a lot of kids at home, three little kids at home, and my second oldest son, he ate way too many beans yesterday. And I osculated him at 3 o'clock this morning when I put my ear up against his stomach and I heard the gurgle, 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 gurgle. It was not a happy sounding sound. Other ways we can study the human body include cadaver dissection. I spent three years working with cadavers and students where we would take the students into the cadaver lab and we'd have a male and female cadaver prosected or pre-cut apart and then we'd put gloves on and have the students actually feel the muscles, actually look at an artery versus a vein. And I guarantee you, an artery and a vein in a human cadaver are not bright red and bright blue. They look almost identical when you inspect them. But if you palpate them, you can very clearly notice the difference between those two blood vessels. 
Another way we can study anatomy and physiology, and we're not going to be doing this one in this class, is comparative anatomy. If you take a zoology course or kind of a traditional evolutionary biology course, you spend a lot of time dissecting sharks and squids and pigs and starfish and lots of different organisms. We're not going to do that. This is human anatomy and physiology in our course. And I think just based on time, this will probably be our last slide. So how else can we study the human body? You can perform exploratory surgery. Exploratory surgery used to be really popular 20, 30 years ago. But now it's fallen out of favor. We have non-invasive techniques to look inside of the human body. These medical imaging techniques are going to look inside of the human being without actually cutting them open. That's much preferred compared to cutting the person open. And when we look at this branch of medical imaging, this part of medicine, this is called radiology. We use radio waves, radiographs, or electromagnetic waves to look inside of the human body. And I think this is a good stopping point. It's 10 2. I will see you in lecture on Wednesday, 8 a.m. Oh, hold that thought.